Echo! Terra! Boy, am I happy to see you! I need to get ready for my Earth Science test. Glad to help, kid. Earth Science is kind of my specialty. When you study Earth Science, you learn about astronomy, geology, meteorology, and more. Let's start by talking about our solar system. My very educated mother just served us nachos. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Hey, that's pretty cool! That makes it easy to remember the planets! Great! Now back to the Solar System Learning Center at my Super Science Station! But what about the... Ah, <laughs> oh, the nachos! Tough going, kid! But nachos aren't the only things in life. And the planets aren't the only things that orbit the sun. Take a look at this. Wow! That's pretty cool, Terra! What are all these chunks of rock between Mars and Jupiter? That is known as the asteroid belt. Water turns to vapor by evaporation. Clouds form slowly in the sky by the process of condensation. When the droplets get too heavy, they fall as precipitation. Rain or sleet or snow that melts, then comes accumulation. Ooh, that's a nice picture. I'd like to go there someday. And the man at the bottom of the picture gives you some perspective as to how large the arch really is. All right, all right. Let's get down to business. Read the question, please. 12. The land form below is an arch found in Arches National Park in Utah. Which type of weathering or erosion is not responsible for shaping this arch? Here's one of those questions that has to be read carefully. The word not makes a big difference in the answer I'll choose. Let's see. Tara talked about the combination of water, ice weathering, and wind all playing a part in forming arches. So I think the answer is A, glaciers. Because glaciers did not help shape the arch. <laughs> right you are. 